What's going on everyone? It's Adrian from Drive Time and welcome to another picks video. Now tonight I'm going to go over the main FanDuel slate for tonight. It starts at 7.30 Eastern time. We got a nice little three game slate. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So first of all, uh, there's some a bunch of guys from Denver who are questionable. Uh, you got the Jokers questionable, Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, uh, Contavious Caldwell, Pope. So a ton of Denver guys questionable. Then you got Keegan Murray. He's questionable. Uh, for Sacramento. So you want to keep an eye out for all of these guys. Um, obviously, if some of these Denver guys miss the game, that's going to add huge value for some other guys, you know, guys like uh, Reggie Jackson, Michael Porter Jr. But uh, just pay attention to these guys, see if they play or not. Now let's go ahead and take a look at who, who the top value picks are for tonight. So you got James Harden, De'Aaron Fox, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. So a bunch of Clippers guys. Uh, they're going against the Oklahoma City Thunder, who play at a really fast pace. And they're all uh, pretty good prices in the 8,000s for the three of those Clippers guys. Then you got De'Aaron Fox. He's $8,700. They lowered his price because he's not really playing that well recently. Um, he's averaging just 30.92 over his last five games. But I think that's more of an anomaly than anything. He had a pretty decent game last game against Milwaukee. So I think uh, he's back on track to put up his normal type numbers. And he's going against the Suns, who actually allow the third most fantasy points to opposing point guards. Um, and if you take a look, you see all of these top value guys are all pretty expensive players. There's no real like cheap value guys tonight. Um, hopefully that changes. I mean, maybe if some of these questionable guys end up missing the game, then you'll get like a cheap value play. But so far, none tonight. OK, now, before I go ahead and get into the games, let me show you my top sleeper play for the night. And that's going to be Pat Beverly. OK, for the Sixers, he's forty two hundred dollars. He's coming off a pretty good game last game against Houston. He finished with 29 points, played uh, 29 minutes, and that was without um, DeAnthony Melton, who's also out tonight. So he actually could end up playing pretty big minutes again tonight, especially if Jamal Murray ends up playing tonight. And you had, and that forces Pat Beverly to play a lot of minutes and guard uh, Jamal Murray. So if Pat Bev gives you something like 25 uh, tonight, he could end up breaking the slate. And also spending down on someone like Pat Beverly, that will allow you to you know, spend up on some of these more expensive guys. Like maybe you could spend up on, a, a, you know, Joel Embiid or Joker if Joker ends up playing. Uh, maybe you spend up on some bonus. So it could open up a lot of things. I wouldn't spend up on uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander if um, if you pick up Pat Bev because then then that would use up all your point guard spots and then you wouldn't have any spots for De'Aaron Fox. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my top sleeper play for tonight. But let's go ahead and get into the games. You got the first game. You got Denver at Philly. Now Denver is actually a really good defense. They allow the fourth fewest points per game, and they actually play at the slowest pace uh, in the entire NBA. And then you got Philly. They allow the eighth fewest points per game, and they play at the thirteenth fastest pace. And another important stat uh, for both of these teams, you know, Joker going against Embiid. You got Denver. They allow the ninth fewest fantasy points to opposing centers. And then Philly actually allows the ninth most fantasy points to opposing centers. So uh, theoretically, Joker would have the better matchup against Joel and B tonight. All right. So like I mentioned earlier, you got a ton of guys questionable, uh, including the Joker. Now, normally you would say, OK, this is a big game for the Joker. Him going against Embiid, he's going to end up playing the game. But then you think back to last season where uh, Joker just completely stopped caring about MVP and he didn't give a damn that uh, Joel Embiid ended up getting the MVP. So who knows, he might end up missing this game and, you know, it might not be a big deal for him. So you got, he's questionable, Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, and then KCP is questionable. Um, now, obviously, if Joker ends up playing the game, he's worth picking up. He's under 12,000 now, and that's because he's averaging 52 0.6 in his last five games, which is well below his season average of, of nearly 57. But he could easily give you 60 plus, and I think 11,700 is a good price for him if he ends up playing. So definitely have some some Joker in some of your lineups. Jamal Murray, 8,000. I think that's kind of expensive for him, but you know maybe you throw him in a few lineups. Now, if Joker ends up missing the game, but J Jamal Murray does play the game, then obviously you want, want to consider a lot of Jamal Murray. Aaron Gordon, uh, he's questionable if he does play. He's worth picking up at 6,200. You know he could give you 35 plus. If he ends up missing the game, then it adds a lot more value for someone like Michael Porter, Ju Michael Porter Jr., who at this current price point, 6700 I don't think Michael Porter Jr. is worth it. Um, you know, you could get Aaron Gordon for $500 cheaper. Now, KCP at $4,700, he's actually pretty decent value. 
he's going to be even better value if some of these other guys miss the game. Uh, and I think the optimizer actually ends up picking up KCP. So maybe you end up fading him just in case you're worried that he gives you under uh, under 20. But he should play pretty big minutes and, and expect him to be guarding Tyrese Maxey uh, for a good portion of the game. So I like Contavious Caldwell Pope's value. Pope's value. Reggie Jackson, obviously not worth playing unless Jamal Murray misses the game. And then these other two guys, Peyton Watson and Christian Braun, I would say they they become playable, uh, especially Christian Braun at 3,900. If, if at least two of these four questionable guys end up missing the games, otherwise they're just not playable, even though they're cheap. And then obviously Deandre Jordan is only playable if Joker misses the game and if Joker misses the game, you're going to see people all over Deandre Jordan. Uh, he's going to be pretty heavily owned. Um, he'll probably have a projection in like the, you know, 27 range and he'll probably be like 50% owned. Okay. And let's go ahead and take a look at Philly. And for Philly, you got pretty much everyone's going to play uh, and beat as probable. He, he returned last night, had a pretty decent game last night. Uh, so pretty much everyone is healthy except DeAnthony Melton, but their, their regular rotation is pretty healthy. Now, obviously you got to play some Joel Embiid. Um, could easily be the top scorer of the evening. He's actually projected to be the top scorer of the evening. You know, he could easily give you 65 plus. So obviously you got to play some Joel Embiid. Tyrese Maxey, I'm not crazy about him at $9,200, especially when you could get other point guards like, you know, Deere and Fox or uh, James Harden for way cheaper. Plus he's going against a really good Denver defense. He's going to have most likely KCP guarding him. So I'm not crazy about Tyrese Maxey. I mean, maybe you throw in some Maxey, uh, if a bunch of Nuggets end up missing the game and and that ma matchup becomes a lot better. Um, otherwise, I don't really think Maxi is worth it. Then you got Tobias Harris, who's really, really expensive, $7,900. And that's only because he was playing pretty well without Joel Embiid. But now that Joel Embiid is back, you see he's going back to his old numbers, finished with 15.6. So I don't think uh, I don't think Tobias is worth it. Kelly Oubre, $6,100. Uh, I think the same applies to him. He was putting up pretty big numbers without Joel Embiid, um, had some 30 plus point games. But uh, now that Joel Embiid is back, I think $6,100 is, is too expensive for Uber. I don't think he's worth it. Nick Batum, on the other hand, at $4,700, uh, I do think he's worth putting in one or two lineups uh, just in case he gives you 27. And if you look at his past four games, he's actually on a pretty decent stretch over his past four games. And $4,700 is really cheap. So if he gives you 27 plus, uh, he could end up being in the number one lineup. Beverly, as I mentioned earlier, is my sleeper pick. So I might throw him in one or two lineups. Um, Paul Reed, not worth it unless Joel Embiid ends up missing the game, which he's probable. So he's probably going to play. And then no one else is really worth it on the Sixers. But that takes us to the next game. You got Sacramento at Phoenix. So Sacramento, they, uh, they allow the ninth most points per game and they play at the 10th fastest pace. And then you got Phoenix. Um, they're a pretty average defense. And they play at the sixth slowest pace. But this game actually has the highest over-under of the evening. So you got Sabonis. He's $10,100 because he's on a pretty good stretch. Uh, averaging 52 points over his last 10 games. So he's on an awesome stretch. Um, I would consider picking up some Sabonis. Especially doing that uh, that sleeper play of Pat Beverly like I talked about. And then spending up on someone like Sabonis. I'm definitely going to have some Sabonis. De'Aaron Fox, obviously great value. Uh, one of the top value plays of the night. $8,700 is a really good price for him. He's obviously going to get picked up by the optimizer. and He's going to be pretty heavily owned. So if you do consider doing a, a Fox fade, maybe you fade him for someone like a um, Jamal Murray, who's $700 cheaper if Jamal Murray ends up playing the game. Because um, maybe Jamal Murray ends up outscoring De'Aaron Fox. It's possible, but I'm not going crazy with the Fox fades. I think he's really good value tonight. Malik Monk, $6,800. I think that's pretty expensive for him. Um, so I'm not crazy about him, but he is averaging 35 over his last 10 games. So maybe you consider picking him up in a few lines because he, because he has given you 40 plus in four out of his last 10 games. But uh, but I'm not going crazy with him at $6,800. And the same goes to Keegan Murray. He does end up playing. Him and Malik Monk are on a pretty good stretch right now. Besides his last game, he had a pretty bad last game against Milwaukee. Um, but besides that, he's on a pretty decent stretch. So maybe you consider some Keegan Murray, but I'm not going crazy with him. But if he actually does end up missing the game, that would add huge value for Trey Lyles, who's really cheap at $4,200. Uh, maybe a little bit more value to Kevin Herter if Keegan Murray ends up missing the game. But I'm not crazy about Kevin Herter at $5,400. I mean, he really hasn't done much besides his last game. Um, but besides that, he hasn't done much this whole season. Um, but yeah, Trey Lyles at $4,200. Um, he actually, I think he gets picked up by the optimizer just 
kind of as a filler because he's only $4,200. But if Keegan Murray ends up missing the game, then then that adds huge value for Trey Lyles. But if Keegan Murray does play and the optimizer ends up still picking up Trey Lyles, I think he is worth consideration for fading because he could easily give you, you know, 15, which isn't going to cut it. And even his projection is even 18. So even if he gets, even if he hits his projection, uh, that's not going to cut it. So uh, yeah, you might want to consider tra- fading Trey Lyles if Keegan Murray ends up playing tonight. And then Harrison Barnes is not worth it. hasn't done much. Uh, and then no one else is really worth playing on Sacramento. But let's go ahead and take a look at Phoenix. There's a few guys worth picking up on Phoenix tonight just because of their matchup. Uh, obviously, KD's worth picking up. Devin Booker's worth picking up in a few lineups. Uh, Bradley Beal, yeah. Now, I I would I would not pick up KD and Booker in the same lineup. They're actually negatively correlated. Um, very rarely do they both score 50-plus in the same game. But yeah, they're all worth consideration, especially uh, in this matchup. And I would actually uh, cap it off at two Suns players. I can't really see any scenario where, you know, more than two guys from Phoenix exceed their their value. Um, so yeah, and, and like I said earlier, uh, if it is going to be two guys, don't let it be Booker and and Durant. You know, Bradley Beal is worth picking up in a few at 7,600. I think he actually gets picked up by the optimizer. Uh, so maybe you fade him in a few. Uh, Nurkic at $7,200. He's definitely worth a few pickups. He could easily give you 40 um, and be the top value center of the night. Grayson Allen, uh, he just won't go away. $5,200. And I actually think he's another guy who gets picked up by the optimizers. So you might want to consider fading him um, just because I don't think he has that high of a ceiling. And then no one else worth picking up on, on the Suns. And that takes us to the last game of the night. You got Oklahoma City at the Clippers. Now for Oklahoma City, they have an average defense, but they play at the eighth fastest pace. And then you got the Clippers. Uh, they allow the 10th fewest points per game. And they actually play at the fifth slowest pace. Now for Oklahoma City, uh, you got Shea Gilgis Alexander at eleven thousand four hundred. You know he could end up being the top scorer of the night, but there's just so much value at point guard tonight that I don't really think he's worth um, putting in that many lineups. So maybe you know put him in two or three lineups, but uh, I'm not putting him in any more than that. Then you got Chet Holmgren. He's not on a very good stretch right now. Uh, he's he hasn't scored forty in any of his last three games, um, and actually. He's going against the Clippers, who are pretty good against opposing centers, although they're without Zubak tonight. So maybe you, you throw him in a lineup um, just in case you think that he's going to have a good matchup uh, against a smaller uh, Clippers lineup. But that could actually go the other way. Uh, maybe they don't even play Chet Holmgren to close out the game because the Clippers have just a, such a small lineup. So so yeah, I'm not crazy about Chet Holmgren tonight. Jalen Williams, maybe he's worth consideration at $7,800, even though that's pretty expensive. He's on a good stretch. Uh, he scored 45.6 his last game. He's actually averaging 41.48 over his last five games. So maybe you throw him in a couple lineups. But, you know, the Clippers are a really good defense, so I'm not going to go crazy with Jalen Williams. Then you got Josh Giddy at $7,100. I'm not going to play him. He doesn't play enough minutes. Uh, and then you got Dort, Isaiah Joe, Kaysan Wallace. None of, those, none of those guys are worth uh, picking up, especially against this Clippers defense. So let's go ahead and look at the Clippers. And the optimizer ends up picking up a ton of guys from the Clippers. It actually ends up with four Clippers. Um, so maybe you want to cap that out. Uh, maybe you want to cap it out at like three Clippers players. Maybe you want to make sure you only, you're only taking two out of these three guys right here. And the way you would do that, let me show you how to do that. You go over here, you, you add a player group under rules, and you say you want at most two from the players from the following group. Why? Paul George. Harden. And when you hit generate lineups, you see that it only picks up uh, Kawhi and James Harden. It doesn't pick up the three of those guys. So it left, ended up leaving out Paul George. Um, so that's how you do that. But but yeah, um, you know they, they obviously have good values just being in the 8,000s. You got Kawhi Leonard, uh, who's averaging 45 over his last 10, and he's in the 8,000s. So he's going against this fast-paced uh, clip, uh, uh, Oklahoma City Thunder team. So that's a pretty good price for him. Uh, James Harden, that's a really good price for him, $8,100. He's actually the top value player of the night. And he's going against the Thunder, who give up the six most uh, fancy points to opposing point guards. And you got Paul George, 8300 He's averaging 41 over his last five games. And we got him projected right around that. Um, so yeah, um, now you might want to consider some Russell Westbrook at 6900 just in case they close the game with a small lineup. And without any bigs playing for the Clippers, a guy like Russell Westbrook, could be you know getting a ton of rebounds 
And last game, he actually uh, finished with 20 mi- 29 minutes. And before that, he, was, he wasn't getting that many minutes. Finished with 42.6 points, and that was without Zubak. So maybe, uh, you know, he ends up closing out the game again tonight, and he gives you 40-plus again. Although, um, you know, I'm not going to go too crazy with Westbrook because he does have some downside potential. And then Norman Powell, I think $5,500 is expensive for him. But, uh, again, he could end up closing the game uh, if the Clippers end up closing the game with a small lineup. Uh, so Daniel Tice obviously gets picked up by the optimizer because he's probably going to be the starting center, but he's definitely a guy who's fade worthy. Uh, you take a look at last game, he played 21 minutes, only finished with 10 points. And the game before that, he finished with 34 points, um, same amount of minutes. So you never know with a guy like Daniel Tice, but he's definitely fade worthy in my opinion. And what I would do is I would outright fade him in a few lineups and in maybe just in case in one lineup, this would be a real uh, stretch, but I might consider this. You fade him for Mason Plumley, who is uh forty three hundred dollars. You know, maybe Tice is having another bad game and they end up going with Mason Plumley at the end of the game, especially if the small lineup isn't working for the Clippers. But yeah, that's all of the games. Now let's go ahead and run one lineup. But let me go ahead and refresh the page. All right, so let's go ahead and run one lineup. And you got Bradley Beal, De'Aaron Fox, Contavious Caldwell Pope, James Harden, Grayson Allen, Paul George, Trey Lyles, Kawhi Leonard, and Daniel Tice. So this will definitely change if some of those Denver guys end up missing the game tonight. But anyways, that's all I got. Make sure if you're not already subscribed to Draft Time, you can sign up for a free seven-day trial and you could try out the optimizer. Um, and you're going to need the optimizer to update your lineups tonight, obviously, because it's probably going to change. But uh, good luck to everyone tonight.